Hey everyone, in this lesson I'm going to talk to you guys about the heme synthesis pathway and I'm going to go through each step of the pathway um, including going through each of the intermediates of the pathway and I'm also going to look at particular enzymes in the pathway and how they're regulated and I'm also going to tell you guys about the importance of heme within our body. So what is heme? Well heme is a prosthetic group so it's a, a moiety that is bound to a protein. And heme is actually a protoporphyrin 9 with an iron moiety. And what that actually means is that a protoporphyrin 9 um, has four pyrrole rings, and I'll get into this a bit more, um, the structure of it and how it's produced a little later. So it has four pyrrole rings and it has a iron moiety within the center of it. And you can see here um, in this heme molecule, the center iron within the middle of it. So why do we need heme? Well, heme is required for hemoglobin synthesis. And as you already know, hemoglobin is a protein involved in oxygen transport within the red blood cells. And don't, don't forget the uh, related protein myoglobin as well, which only has one heme. Um, and hemoglobin actually has four heme groups. Um, and myoglobin is also important in oxygen transport. But nevertheless, um, when heme is used to produce hemoglobin, we actually call that the erythropoietic system. And this is um, this heme is actually produced in the long bones in our body. Um, and this is actually where about 85% of the heme is produced. And it's actually produced for hemoglobin that is actually used in red blood cell and red blood cell production. So another requirement for heme is actually cytochrome synthesis. Now, um, cytochrome... Um, you may have heard the cytochrome P450 system within the liver. Now that is the major detoxification pathway in the liver and cytochromes are critically important in that detoxification system. Now they're very important in hydroxylation reactions to detoxify particular drugs and compounds and when heme is actually produced for cytochrome synthesis we call that the hepatic system and again as I mentioned before this hepatic production of heme is critically important for cytochrome P450 system within the liver. So how does heme production start? Well, it actually starts with um, the amino acid glycine and succinyl-CoA. And these two components are actually used by uh, an enzyme known as ALA synthase or amino levulinic acid synthase. And this process actually occurs within the mitochondria to produce amino levulinic acid. Now this step in the heme synthesis pathway is the first step but is actually the rate limiting step of the heme synthesis pathway. Now within the hepatic system Hemin, which is a byproduct of heme, actually negatively inhibits ALA synthase, while reduced hepatic heme actually upregulates ALA synthase. So uh, you can actually have reduced hepatic heme if you overutilize that cytochrome P450 system by, say, for instance, ingesting too much of some drug or um, some toxic compound. Uh, the cytochrome P450 system become overutilized um, and would actually require um, more heme production. And that is why um, a reduced hepatic heme would actually upregulate this enzyme to compensate. Now in the erythropoietic system, iron and erythropoietin are actually the um, activators or upregulators of this enzyme. So once we have produced aminolevulinic acid, it actually takes two of them to actually go on to the next step. And the next step involves ALA dehydrase, which actually occurs in the cytosol. And this produces something known as porphobilinogen. And this enzyme actually requires zinc. And because it requires a metal, it can actually be inhibited by lead. So we all have heard that lead can cause anemia. And this is why lead actually can inhibit this enzyme or inhibit ALA dehydrase. So once we have porphobilinogen, it actually takes four porphobilinogens to move on to the next step. And once you have four of these, the enzyme uroporphyrinogen 1 synthase will actually take these four porphobilinogens and um, in the cytosol, this is all happening in the cytosol, will release four 
ammonia and per, to, uh, will actually produce um, uroporphyrinogen 1. Now, uroporphyrinogen 1 will actually be um, processed by uroporphyrinogen 3 cosynthase, also in the cytosol, into uroporphyrinogen 3. Uroporphyrinogen 3 will then undergo a reaction with um, uroporphy uroporphyrinogen decarboxylase to produce coproporphyrinogen 3. So I know, guys, this is a lot of big words, but we'll get through it. Um, so coproporphyrinogen 3 is um, produced from uroporphyrinogen 3 by the enzyme uroporphyrinogen um, decarboxylase. Now, coproporphyrinogen 3 will actually undergo another step via the enzyme um, coproporphyrinogen uh, oxidase into protoporphyrinogen 9. So we're kind of getting we're getting close there. You can see as we're moving on, this structure is becoming more and more like heme. So uh, protoporphyrinogen 9 um, is produced, and then we'll actually go through protoporphyrinogen oxidase to produce uh, protoporphyrin 9. So this is we're, we're pretty much there, but we're missing one thing, and that is the iron. And the iron will actually come from the last step um, via the enzyme ferrochelatase. And this actually happens in the mitochondria as well. So this is where iron is actually added to this protoporphyrin 9 um, molecule. And this is when you actually have full, fully fledged heme. Um, so, and again, because we're using a metal, where we're using a metal ion in this reaction, this reaction can actually be inhibited by lead again. So lead can inhibit this reaction as well as the um, ALL, ALA dehydrase reaction. So just remember that guys, lead can inhibit both um, the second step of the pathway as well as the last step of the pathway. It can inhibit both ALA dehydrase and inhibit ferrochelatase leading to anemia. And that's why lead leads to anemia. So I know this is a lot of big words. Um, you might find that it's not easy to remember all of this, but all I would suggest is that you guys remember um, a few of the enzymes. And um, I would suggest you remember the first enzyme because that's the rate limiting enzyme, the ALA synthase. I'd also suggest um, remembering ALA dehydrase because that's where lead actually acts. Um, and that's the second step of the pathway. And I'd also say you should remember ferrochelatase, the last enzyme of the pathway, because this is also where lead is um, an inhibitor. Uh, so those are the three big key enzymes that I, I want you guys to remember. And an easy way to remember the name or, or the the steps of the pathway, I kind of always think of um, think of something um, called a puck PP. And now it's a funny way of remembering it, but um, the A can stand for aminolevulinic acid. The P can stand for porphobilinogen. The U can stand for a uroporphyrinogen 1. The other U, uroporphyrinogen 3. Uh, the C uh, for coproporphyrinogen 3. The P, protoporphyrinogen 9. And then the other P, protoporphyrin. And then the last one, of course, is heme. So that might help you guys out. Um, I would just suggest going through this a couple times to get it full, um, a better, fuller understanding of this pathway. Anyways, guys, I hope that helped. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.